If you believe that God is a monarch, an absolute omniscient and omnipotent authority, shall we say a sort of cosmic ego, then to claim to be that is to introduce democracy into the kingdom of heaven. To usurp divine authority and to speak in its name without proper authorization. And they asked Jesus, by what authority do you speak? Of heaven or of men? And he was tricky about answering that one. He said, by what authority did John the Baptist speak? And they were nervous about answering that one. So the gospel of Jesus, which of course was hushed up from its inception, was that wake up everybody and find out who you are. Asking that, again in the Gospel of St. John, they, pointing to his disciples, may be one, even as you, Father, and I are one. And when he was accused of blasphemy, the Jews took up stones to stone him, you know. And he said, many good works have I shown you from the Father, and from which of these do you stone me? And they said, for a good work, we don't stone you, but for blasphemy, because you being a man, make yourself God. Now listen to the reply. He said, is it not written in your law, I have said ye are gods? And if that is what the scripture says, it can't be denied. So why do you tell me I blaspheme because I say I am a son of God? No answer. because I said, I am a son of God. It doesn't say that in your King James translation. It says, I am the son of God. And you'll see the the italicized, and you will think that that is for emphasis if you don't realize that passages in italics in the King James Bible are interpolations by the translators. In Greek, leaving out the definite article is equivalent of having the indefinite article. We us to Theu is a son of God, not O we us to Theu. So son of in Hebrew and in Arabic means of the nature of. When we call someone a son of a bitch, we mean bitchy. And so if you call someone a son of God, you mean divine. Of the nature of God, as the Nicene Creed subsequently defined it, he is of one substance with the Father. But what happened was that this being blasphemy for the Jews, it became blasphemy for the Christians, for anyone else than Jesus to say it. They said, okay, baby, it was so with you, but there it stops. No more of this business. And as a result of that, Jesus was made irrelevant by pedestalization by being kicked upstairs. In spite of the fact that he said, greater works than these that I do shall you do. Oh no, upstairs with you, baby, because we just can't have that sort of thing going on in a monarchical universe. We are not gonna have democracy in the kingdom of heaven. So this is why the gospel is impossible because we are supposed to follow the example of Christ. Where he says, for example, be not anxious for the morrow. Do not worry about what you shall eat, what you shall drink and what you shall wear. Don't take care of you. Doesn't he take care of the birds? Don't the flowers grow? And they're wonderful, they're crazy, they're great. What are you worrying about? I've never heard a sermon preached on that, never. Because it's totally subversive, the economy would crash. <laughs> so they say, oh yes, that's all very well, but he was the boss's son. <laughs> See, he had that colossal advantage. Take up your cross and follow him. Hey, but wait a minute. I don't know I'm going to be resurrected three days later. I can't do all those miracles. He had an unfair advantage.
So how can you ask us to follow the example of Christ? But supposing he didn't have an unfair advantage. Supposing that what was true about Jesus as a son of God is true of us. Only, only a few of us know it. And we are pretty careful to be quiet about it, lest the same thing happen to us as happened to Jesus. <laughs> and indeed it often does. Now, why talk about this? Is it interesting? Is it important? For the human being to realize that in some sense of the word, whatever it means, he is God or one with God. Well, the importance of it is this that to know that you are God is another way of saying that you feel completely with this universe. You feel profoundly rooted in it and connected with it. You feel, in other words, that the whole energy which expresses itself in the galaxies is intimate. It is not something to which you are a stranger, but it is that with which you, whatever that is, are intimately bound up. That in your seeing, your hearing, your talking, your thinking, your moving, you express that which it is which moves the sun and other stars. And if you don't know that, if you don't feel that, well, naturally you feel alien, you feel a stranger in the world, and if you feel a stranger, you feel hostile. And therefore, you start to bulldoze things about, to beat it up, and to try and make the world submit to your will, and you become a real troublemaker. So I feel also, uh, one reason why you become hostile is that feeling that you were just brought into this place, that your father and mother went up to some monkey business that they probably shouldn't have done, or it was bad rubber goods, and as a result of this, here you are, and you didn't ask to be here. Well, you always feel you can turn around and blame them. You can blame somebody. You can blame the government. You can blame the rascals. You can blame the, blame the cheaters. Always supposing you yourself aren't a rascal, which is a long odds. Uh, you always can blame someone and say, I didn't ask for it. Take it away. And yet, and yet, and yet, very few people are all too ready to take it away. And if you don't, if you don't say take it away, what are you going to do? You've really got to assume responsibility for it. You've got to say yes to what happens. It's my karma. And that doesn't mean merely, there are many misinterpretations of the doctrine of karma. It's usually and popularly understood is that what happens to you, either fortunate or unfortunate, is the result of good or bad deeds in a previous life. Well, that's popular superstition. The real meaning of karma, the word in Sanskrit means simply doing. And if I say of an event it is your karma, it is saying it is your doing. So the exposition a book which would expound karma would be not so much a who done it as a you done it. But that seems fantastic.